Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, Certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Hello everyone, delighted that you can join us today. Thank you for taking time out of your, your day. Um, we have uh, a great, uh, great topic today, the, to the uh, TOGAF Standard 10th Edition and the TOGAF Certification Portfolio. So this is uh, kind of munging two topics together, really, um, both things that we get asked a lot about. And we've had a Toolkit Tuesday on this before, but uh, uh, because of the uh, level of interest and the, uh, and the questions we get, we're, uh, we're going to, to run it again. Uh, and probably again at some point in the future. But before we get into that, um, as I say, thank you for taking time out wherever you are. Um, just a, a housekeeping point, my usual one for those who've become regulars here, um, the way we ask questions on Toolkit Tuesday is through the Q&A channel. So uh, if you can't see that on your screen, then click on the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you'll see the option to click on Q&A. So please use that for the questions, but please do use the chat channel for, um, well, it's already working and served good purpose about, about the sound today. So, uh, but do, uh, do con feel free to uh, uh, say hi to the other attendees today. And we are hearing where you're from in the world. So uh, let us know uh, with all the, the uh, crazy climate changes that are going around. Um, people that are usually in uh, dry, sunny areas like me are in wet areas. So uh, it's all uh, it's always great to hear where people are joining from. And to those of you who are watching this um, uh, after the event in the comfort of your own home, then um, uh, thank you for taking the time to do that too. So as I say, today's topic, the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition and the TOGAF certification portfolio. And to introduce us, uh, talk us through this um, as succinctly as he can, but it's a big topic, is my colleague, delighted to welcome back, Andrew Josie. Andrew is our VP of Standards and Certification at the Open Group, overseeing all the, the certification and testing programs that we have. He also manages the standards process for the Open Group, which is uh, a key part of uh, everything we do, to be honest. So since joining the company in 1996, Andrew has been closely involved with all of that standards development, certification and testing and uh, is uh, largely responsible with some, um, obviously with some great work from the from the membership and uh, other colleagues in the open group for um, putting together the uh, TOGAF certification portfolio. So um, a warm welcome back to Toolkit Tuesday for Andrew Josie. Welcome, Andrew. Thank you, Steve. Thanks. Let's um, get my uh, screen sharing going here. OK, so uh, thank you. Good afternoon. Good morning, wherever you are, for joining us today. Um, I'm Andrew Josie, as Steve mentioned, I uh, want to work for the OPA Group, uh, run our standards and, uh, and our certification business. Um, we're going to be talking about the standard, the new standard, the TOGAF Standard 10th Edition, and also the TOGAF Certification Portfolio. So this, so this talk has sort of two main themes. Um, we're actually going to split it into three. So these are three takeaways I want to leave you with today. First of all, an overview of the standard itself. Then we'll look at the certification portfolio and we'll look at the uh, the paths within the, the certification portfolio, depending on where you're coming from, you know, whether you're studying the TOGA version 9.2 or the new 10th edition. And then we'll look at the new learning paths that have been specifically added uh, for the 10th edition. 
So let's start off by look, taking a very brief look at the Togo Standard 10th edition. Obviously, we've got you know limited time that we can cover in Toolkit Tuesday, so we're, I've had to keep this fairly short. So I'm going to just sort of draw on a few of the key features. First of all, um, what we heard, you know, when we introduced the 10th edition, uh, what we needed before we introduced that, we, we had a lot of feedback uh, on the previous versions that. Um, Practitioners wanted more guidance, better guidance and topical guidance. So that's one thing you will see. A key change is the updated modular structure, which is designed to facilitate extension. And so will actually support us um, delivering further extended content in the future. So there's a lot of focus now on guidance, and I'll hopefully show that in the next couple of slides. Uh, firstly, let's look at the modular structure and see where the standard actually fits. If um, if you um, go to the Open Group site and you run along the top of the home page, you will see on the right there is a link to the what we call the Open Group Library. And if you go in there, you will see basically those top five boxes on the front page of the Open Group Library. And you can hop into the first of those, which is actually what we call the TOGAF Library. And that contains all of our en enterprise architecture related content. And within that resides the standard itself. There are a number of other things that we include in the library around the standard. So there's white papers, various guides, reference cards, etc. But uh, at the heart of the library is the TOGAF standard. Now, the TOGAF standard has evolved from a sync being a single document, you know, with the version 9.2 standard, it was a single document into a set of documents. And there are actually two categories that we uh, basically you can put those documents into. The first one on the left there you see is what we call the TOGAF fundamental content. Uh, this is intended to be stable and enduring, and it basically corresponds uh, to what was the version 9.2 standard. But it's been evolved and it's also been modularized. And I'll, I'll come back and show you a little bit about that. And also we've added some more what we intend to be dynamic content in the form of TOGAF series guides. So what we're seeing there, the fundamental content is pretty much the what. And the TOGAF series guides are intended as the how-to. So there's a lot of new guidance that we've added. If we look at this in a slightly different form here, here we sort of break each document down into a little, little circle to emphasize the modular structure. We have on the left here the, to the six TOGAF fundamental contents uh, documents. And then we introduce there are 20 TOGAF series guides at the moment. Now we expect this set to grow over time. So today you can see we have a total of 26 documents in the 10th edition, but I know there's going to be a few more documents added quite soon because the architecture forum, the Open Groups Architecture Forum that uh, develops and maintains the TOGAF standard is actually working on additional content, additional TOGAF series guides. And the idea is that we will grow this set so it will be further extended. Now we package this set in a number of different ways. So you can go to the Open Group web and you can get the standard available in multiple formats. So we have an online digital edition, which has a graphical front end, which is sort of the bottom left there. And if you click into that, you can also get into the, the textual form of the online digital edition. We also have PDF downloads, which I don't show here. And we also have hard copy that you can order from, you know, from your sort of main booksellers. Now, continuity has been a key driver. So what we've tried to do with, you know, with the, the 10th edition is um, continue the character, the core character of the standard and, and retain that in, in the fundamental content. So if you look at the fundamental content, you will see things that you recognize. So if you're familiar with the TOGAF standard, you will see the architecture development. You will see the ADM cycle. You will see things such as catalogs, diagrams, matrices. You'll see these models about the enterprise segment and capability partitioning and so on. That, that's all been retained in the fundamental content. What we have done, as I mentioned, with the fundamental content, so what was the version 9.2 standard, is to revise and reorganize that. So we've actually split that out into a set of related documents. Again, that's to support future evolution should we decide that we do need to change them it's it's more flexible to actually um, you know adjust individual parts and you can see the fundamental content sits within um, the the TOGAF library and is supported by the TOGAF series guides the TOGAF series guides as I mentioned they provide the how-to 
So they cover a range of topics and that goes from general how to guidance, guidance on establishing an architecture team through to reference architectures and so on. I'm going to give you a quick overview of the type of documents in the next two slides. So as I mentioned, we have general how to. So there's some guidance for practitioners. There's guidance for using the TOGA standard in a digital enterprise. We have domain specifics. Uh, we're particularly strong on business architecture. So there's about six different business architecture series guides out there. So a lot of extended guidance, uh, data and information architecture. Uh, there's agile methods using uh, the TOGA ADM with agility and so on. And we also have reference models and there's a particular TOGAF series guide just dedicated to how you establish and evolve an EA team. So you can go to these if you went to the online digital edition, you can actually see all of these guides down the sort of left hand navigation bar of the standard and you can you can hop into those. Now, how do you get started with all this? Well, the good news is we have a white paper and this is a great resource. If, you, if you're just coming, even if, if you're coming at the standard for the first time, this explains a lot of the motivation for, you know, what, how we've um, actually structured the standard. Also, if you're coming at it, you know, you're very familiar with it. This will actually give you um, release notes about the changes and things and actually includes a section on how to get stand, uh, how to get started using the standard coming from a couple of different viewpoints. So it's a very good resource if you've you know, want to get a start and don't want to dive into the, I think it's about 1500 pages, the current total set of, of the 26 documents, but wanted to pick up like a, a short 10 pager, this would be a good start. As I mentioned, we have an online digital edition. Um, this is intended to make it easier to navigate the ex expanded content. Obviously with 26 documents, you need to, you know, it, you need to have some assistance with navigation. So we pro produce both a graphical entry point and then if you click through that, you can go down into a textual uh, edition of the standard. There's search capabilities, as I mentioned, down the left navigation bar. There's, there's um, navigation points into the individual documents. One thing we've included in the digital edition is the ability to give feedback. So we have on every page, there's a little sort of bug comment symbol. And you can click on that and that pops up a form that basically you can input you know some feedback on that page and that will go back to the standard developers and goes back into their bug, bug tracker so that's been very successful i think we're up to 40 50 sort of bits of feedback we've had from the public so that was something new we wanted to do was to make it easier for to, to, to take feedback on the standard so that was a brief look at the standard what i wanted to do now is to talk about the TOGAF certification portfolio so this is the training the learning the education the iterative learning paths that we've sort of built around the standard. So if you want to you know, become an enterprise architect, become a business architect, take on certain specialties, this is the education sort of path that we've put together. So let's take a look at the portfolio. So what does it cover now? Uh, one thing you should, uh, should know is the portfolio covers both the TOGAF standard version 9.2 and the TOGAF standard 10th edition. Uh, we often get asked, you know, how long are you going to support TOGAF 9 certification? And the answer to that is we will continue to support that uh, going forward. There's a lot of market demand for certifications against uh, TOGAF 9 certification, and we will continue to support that. And we've introduced, obviously, certifications for the TOGAF standard 10th edition and also some new learning paths. So that if you're, you are TOGAF 9 certified, there are some forward paths. Now, given the broad range of material in the TOGAF standard 10th edition, it sort of didn't really make sense to try and make a single certification. So another question we often get is, well, why is there no TOGAF 10 foundation and TOGAF 10 certified like you have for TOGAF 9? Well, that's really because there's a broad set of material now. And um, what we wanted to do was actually to define multiple bodies of knowledge and multiple learning paths that related to uh, specific skill sets and competencies drawn from the standard. So what we have done is to identify a number of what we call bodies of knowledge. So that's sort of groups of information, related sets of skill sets and competencies from the standard for specific topics. So if you look at this diagram going along the bottom from left to right, you see we've defined a body of knowledge for BA, for business architecture, for EA, enterprise architecture. We've uh, 
defined a couple of specialist bodies of knowledge. Now, these relate to specific new topics that we've introduced in the 10th edition. So we have an agile specialist and we have a digital specialist. We've also defined a body of knowledge for EA leaders. And the idea is with the one on the right, you know, there could be future bodies of bodies of knowledge defined and future learning paths. So what we've got is one standard leads to has led to multiple bodies of knowledge and that's leading to multiple certifications. And I'll go through those in a minute. So this is another picture of the sort of high level view outlining the elements of the portfolio. So in here you can see both the, um, the certifications based on TOGAF 9, which are in white and the new ones that are based on the 10th edition. We also have some other boxes which are in grey and italic. They are for what we call um, TOGAF certification credentials. Uh, and I'll explain a little bit of more about that, but it's basically the, the size of the chunk of learning. We have sort of modularized some things down into smaller chunks of learning, which uh, can be taken in a, in a shorter time versus a, a full sort of multi-day certification. So we'll just talk through the learning paths. So if you're familiar with the current TOGAF 9 certification program, you know you will study the version 9.2 uh, standard there are sort of as, as you come down there are two options you can go for foundation just taking the part one or you can do what we call a combined exam that takes you to um, TOGAF 9 certified so you could take that all in one chunk or you do it stepwise okay so that's the current program that we have for TOGAF uh, version 9.2 and what we've introduced now for the 10th edition as I mentioned we're coming at it slightly differently based on skill sets and competencies coming down from the 10th edition we have two main paths. That's one for the enterprise architect and one for the business architect. Again, for the enterprise architect, very similar to TOGAF 9, you can do it either stepwise, take the part one exam followed by the part two to get what we call, get to what we call the enterprise architecture practitioner. Focus now on being you know, a practitioner, the person who actually goes out there and you know, develops and sustains the EA. Or, or, and you could also do that as a combined exam. So if you just say, well, I'm not going to do it stepwise. I just want to take both parts on a single day. You can do that. And then the other thing, if you look back on the bottom line there, you can see there is a path from being TOGAF 9 certified across to being the new TOGAF Enterprise Architecture Practitioner. And that's by what we call the bridge, the bridge exam. So there is a bridging path. On the right, we have business architecture. At this time, there is just a foundation level of business architecture. So we haven't gone beyond foundation yet. Obviously, that, that could change if the material is developed and added to the TOGAF standard 10th edition to allow us to support that. I mentioned also there were some specialisms. So also there are paths that can lead to now. This is what I meant by the uh, uh, smaller chunks of learning. We actually call these certification credentials. If you look at the bottom there, these are actually different shaped badges. So these tend to be uh, three hours upwards, I would estimate. Um, you know, there's about I think there's about nine units. So you can typically do these easily in a day. Uh, we have introduced agile specialist, digital specialist and the enterprise architecture leader. Now, there is a prerequisite, but the prerequisite is what we call TOGAF Foundation and Up. Now, that can be TOGAF 9 Foundation or it can be the new TOGAF EA Foundation. So the idea is we've introduced learning paths for individuals who've, who've also spent their time, you know, currently being TOGAF 9 certified. So they, they can choose to take on these new uh, new learning paths from there. So let's look briefly at the certifications and certification credentials. Uh, it's a very quick look at this. Obviously, I do cover this in, in more depth in other sessions, but today we're trying to keep it uh, fairly short. These are the three certifications. So by certification, I mean sort of, you know, it's a multi-day amount of study. You know, you're talking sort of two days for foundation and then maybe three days for the next level. So, you know, it's not hours, it's more days rather than hours. Uh, this is the body of knowledge for the TOGAF Enterprise Architect Learning Path. As I mentioned, there are 26 documents. Obviously, we don't have to learn all the content of 26. It's actually drawn from a set of about 12. The scissors actually indicate that we, we take sections of the document. It doesn't mean you have to know all 12. Um, there are, as I mentioned, there are two ways to approach the EA practitioner. Um, either if you're coming from TOGAF 9, you've got the bridging path, which is on the top there. Or if you're coming uh, new, you can do it stepwise if you wish, or go straight to um, straight to the EA practitioner level. We also have an additional badge for this. Um, this relates to the practitioner element, and um, 
some actually practical exercises that are built within accredited training courses. And I'll mention that very briefly a little bit later. Uh, Enterprise Architecture Foundation, just to cover what this is, obviously this is about, as the diagram shows, it's covering basic concepts, foundation sort of concepts, getting the common language. Uh, obviously going up in the level to the practitioner, you're taking on the ability to analyze and apply the TOGAF standard. That's, as I mentioned, that's targeted at people who will be developing, sustaining and, and using an EA, the actual enterprise architects themselves. As I mentioned, there's a bridge. So if you're coming from TOGAF 9 certified and you wish to update your qualifications, there is a path to do that. We've tried to recognize, you know, your existing sort of investment in your certification. So it's a slightly different uh, syllabus. It recognizes some of the investment you've made. The exam is a bit smaller. You know, it's like a one hour exam compared to if you're starting afresh, you have to take a 60 minute exam followed by a 90 minute exam. So uh, we do try to recognize the investment that individuals have made in their TOGAF 9 certification. As I mentioned, there's an applied practitioner badge. So if you attend an accredited training course and you complete a set of practical learning studies, what we call these are actually sort of exercises, not an exam, it's not a test. It's more just like a, a set of exercises where it's sort of, you can sort of apply the standard in different ways and um, you can look at um, how it's been applied. It's based on uh, some of the TOGAF series guides specifically, and uh, you can earn the badge that way. Business architecture, now this is the body of knowledge. It's, as I mentioned, it's a different subset. As I mentioned, there were quite a few business architecture TOGAF series guides available now and those are in the, the body of knowledge for business architecture. There are a couple of paths to business architecture. You can go afresh, although we do have an existing certification credential and we will be providing a migration path for individuals who've already got that credential. So they will basically have to just do a top up. I think it's about four additional models, modules over, over what they've done previously to get to the new foundation. Again, like the EA Foundation, this is really about fundamental concepts, getting the basic understanding, getting the language. And one good thing about our business architecture course is we have a lot of uh, good techniques that you can come away with after doing the studying. As I mentioned, there's a, we have a very rich set of TOGAF series guides on business architecture. So it's particularly useful if you want to come away from a course and then have five or six different techniques you can apply to develop a business architecture. Mentioning very briefly here, we have digital specialist, a certification credential. This focuses in on a couple of new TOGAF series guides in the 10th edition that focus on digital. So you can, this is about applying to, the TOGAF standard to support a digital enterprise. Obviously, I'm going through these very quickly here at the end. And we also have an agile specialist one. Again, there are a couple of um, new TOGAF series guides that focus specifically on agile, agility, applying the EA with agility. Uh, ADM as with um, Agile Sprints and so on again. So there's a particular certification credential, a particular learning path you can take there. And um, and then the final certification credential we've introduced, uh, just about to introduce. In fact, we've been working on the beta on this and this is coming out very soon now is what we call the Enterprise Architecture Leader. So and that's, based, that's based again on a specific TOGAF series guide. So anyway, I've given you the very whistle stop tour here today of um, of well, what we've got with the standard and the certification portfolio to support it. And then also the new learning paths. OK, so um, I think back to Steve and then we'll be able to take some questions. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much. It's uh, a lot of content to get through in a short period of time. And uh, I know you've given much longer explanations and talks about this and uh, we're, we're always happy to uh, get the word out. But um, let's, uh, in the interest of, of time, let's let's move straight forward. I'm going to combine a couple of uh, a couple of questions into one. Um, people at different stages of their learning. Um, uh, one is, uh, will well, basically, will my TOGAF nine certification expire? And the second part of that question is, I'm I've been training for TOGAF 9 certification, what do I do now? Well, firstly, TOGAF 9 certification doesn't expire. So that, that's the good news on that. There's no sort of expiry date. It always, our certifications basically apply to the body of knowledge. So they are, you know, it is valid. You trained and you got certified in TOGAF 9. So you still know about it. It's not that you don't know about it in two years time. You still <laughs> still know about it. And if you're, so if you're currently doing TOGAF 9 uh, training, um, obviously you can continue 
Uh, you can continue and you can continue down the uh, the paths for TOGAF 9 certification. And you and if you wish to then update, you could go to the bridge or obviously you could then or you could look over and take a look at the new syllabus for, for maybe the enterprise architecture track and see whether or not that's that's suitable. Right. We've just published a new study guide um, for Free EA Foundation. We'll probably have another study guide for practitioner, but that will probably be about another six months away, I should think, at the moment. Right. And on that on that point, a um, uh, question just come in. Uh, I'm 9.2 certified. What's the cost of the bridge exam? Uh, retail cost is $375. Yeah. Obviously, if you're doing it with, you know, obviously, if you attend a training course, then the, the uh, that's accredited and the, then the voucher, the exam is actually included with with the accredited training. Right. And obviously, we don't we don't set the prices for training courses. That's that's down with trainers. So a question about the uh, the, the the standard itself is, um, well, about, it's really around naming, I guess. Um, why is there no TOGAF 10 Foundation or TOGAF 10 Practitioner? OK, well, this goes back to the, um, as I mentioned, the standard's very broad now. And so it, if we were going to do a foundation across all 26, as it is at the moment, it would be a very shallow foundation. So what instead we've done is to basically identify competency sort of based topics or skill sets related to skill sets. So what we've done is to look at which parts of the of, the, of those 26 volumes would be most applicable to for being an enterprise architect, which is that we came up with a set of 12 and we sort of sliced that into a syllabus. And similarly, we did that for a business architect. We've done that for an agile specialist. So basically, we've gone around the 26 sort of identifying you know, uh, particular what we call you know, bodies of knowledge. So from within there, if, if we just did TOGAF 10 foundation, as I mentioned, we could go very broad, but uh, very shallow. So, OK, and that, that takes me to uh, another question that's come in from from a training perspective, actually, which it, which is um, it's a it's a couple of things combined. But essentially, it's around the TOGAF series guides and their relevance to the exam. And ultimately, the question is, um, will the new TOGAF series guides be automatically relevant for the exam? Well, again, we have this sort of middle layer or something between the standard and the certification, which we call the body of knowledge. And so that actually is a document. You can think of it uh, as a syllabus, really. So it is, it's what we call formally a set of conformance requirements. So that actually identifies specific documents, specific versions of the document and specific sections of the document related to the learning outcomes. So we will say so. So, for example, a new TOGAF series guides get added that will not impact that existing syllabus. Now, we may revise the syllabus later to include things from a new TOGAF series guide if we thought it was particularly relevant or we wanted to or we might define a new body of knowledge. You know, maybe there's a bunch of information that comes in uh, you know, that expands the data architecture, uh, uh, architecture information. And we decide we need to have a data architect uh, certification or a data architect um, certification credential. So the idea is we should be able to develop and evolve the standard and also, you know, retain what we have in the certification program. So we try to sort of break the tight coupling in a way. Um, in a way, it was almost holding each other back sometimes because people would say, oh, well, you know, we can't change the standard because we've got the certification uh, and vice versa. So what we tried to do is to to allow the standard to continue to grow, evolve and change. But uh, we have a way just to make sure that what we've defined in our body of knowledge, you know, is obviously easily identifiable. And we will make sure that those versions of a document that are referenced in a body of knowledge is still available. It's not suddenly they will be deprecated and disappear. You know, they will be you'll be there because obviously being referenced in the certification means we need to keep that version of the of, of the document right. available. And uh, two two quick questions to wrap up. Um, we're getting uh, close to time. Uh, one is, uh, can we study what well, is there self self study available for the business? Architecture? Yes, there is self study available for the business architecture. In fact, we just published a new study guide. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. So there's a, what we call an EA foundation study guide that's just been published and also a BA foundation study guide. 
that's been available. There's also what we call online self-study that's been available uh, since October. So you can go to the open group shop and you can look at all these things and you can see there that we've got a couple of options. So, you know, we do have online self-study for everything right now. So, um, <laughs> and obviously you can also get accredited training from our accredited training course providers. And I think there's about 15 or more now who are starting to offer courses uh, based on the, the new certifications for the TOGAF standard 10th edition. So one right. of the questions there was, is there a on self-study for bridge? Yes, there is. Right. Great. Thank you. You covered that one. So the last question, um, it's really someone checking their understanding, I guess. Are there presently four bodies of knowledge? Uh, got to count them up. Um, yeah, I'm thinking through that. <laughs> yeah, well, there is what there. There, in fact, at the moment, if you went to our if you went to our uh, online the library and you looked up TOGEF certification, you will see we have a couple of documents. There are basically there's a single document that we call the TOGAF Certification Conformance Requirements. I think it's version four. And that's called multi-level. It's called multi-something. And that contains BA as well as EA. But it doesn't contain the bridge. The bridge sits in a separate document, partly because at some point we may wish to, to deprecate the bridge. And so there's sort of two documents there. So they cover EA, BA and the bridge. Then there's another document that covers Agile Specialists, another one that covers Digital Specialists, and another one that covers uh, EA Leader. So I think that was, was it five <laughs> at the moment? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. And uh, one's just come in, last one, I'll, I'll take it. Is, it. is it required to take a class for the bridge? Uh, no, you can, you can self-study for the bridge. Right. Okay. What we would like to do is to produce some you know, further study guides, but uh, those all take time. And, um, of course. Yeah, so uh, currently we've just got the foundation study guys, but we do have online self studies. You can basically go online and obviously they're not books. It's more, you know, it's in a Moodle, what we call the Moodle and LMS. And you basically can look through some slides with commentary and, uh, and study that way. Obviously, you can also download the conformance requirements. And if you wish, you can look at the, the syllabus that way. The, all the conformance requirements that we call, you know, that, that make up the body of knowledge are all freely available in the uh, TOGAF in, in the TOGAF library, which is in within the open group library. So. Excellent. Andrew, we'll leave it there. Um, as I said, you're always happy to, uh, to get the word out um, along with the rest of us. So uh, it's, it's a topic that uh, uh, there's a lot of interest for. So, which is, which is great for everybody. So meanwhile, thank you for today's um, sharing and uh, yep, thank you. Uh, we will hear from you again at some point in the future, I'm sure. Thanks, Steve. Thank Thanks, Andrew. So that's it for today's uh, topic on Toolkit Tuesday. We will be back next week. Um, we are running these uh, weekly at the moment. A lot of topics to get through, and we're building up towards the uh, the group summit in London, um, uh, in person meeting in London, where we're getting together lots of our lots of our uh, forums and work groups. Promises to be a great event, April seventeenth through the twentieth in London. If you're interested and uh, can get there. We'd love to see you there. Um, so next week's topic is actually uh, uh, going into our um, w the world of federal avionics and our face consortium activity, and uh, which is really some of you may have heard me say it's really where a lot of the uh, activities in uh, industry specific activities started um, uh, was with the face consortium, and uh, the the title is solving comp problems through open software standards. And uh, presenting that will be my colleague Alicia Taylor, who is the FACE Consortium Program Director. So uh, please join us next week. Um, even if you're not uh, in the avionics space, there are a lot of good learnings there, as I say, that apply to uh, many, many industries. So please join us next week if you're uh, available to. Sorry about the glitch in sound at the beginning, and hopefully we'll get some sound at the end. But if not, um, never mind, you'll have to imagine the tune. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching Toolkit Tuesday.